Hey pals, thanks for stopping in today. We have had a really, really crazy week. In fact, the plumber just left because the toilet was gushing water all over that end of the workshop. <laughs> Lovely. But we had a really great guy come out, Ellison's Plumbing from Salem, Ohio. And he had it fixed in 45 minutes, needing a new seal. And so here I am, I'm doing the video, and Javi will probably edit it for Sunday, and it'll come out Sunday this week. So I guess you'll be seeing this Sunday. So, hi Sunday, whatever. Anyhow, today we're talking about doing Swelligant Patina Color over Resin. And of course we all know that you can do it over polymer clay. You could do it over styrofoam if you want to. And I did a number of well videos some time ago, but not for a while. Today we're going to show you how to do them over these really, really pretty resin flowers. And how nice they look when you do it. And we're going to also show you what happens when we use the new Sky Sapphire Patina which is a new one. Before they had the Tiffany green, they had the gold green and the darkening. Now they've got a new one. It is so beautiful blue. You're going to really love it. You're going to want some. And we've got a very deep inventory on the site now if you want to visit us. But anyway, before I yak on too much, let's get right to it. We're going to go over to the other side of the workshop and you're going to watch over my shoulder while I show you what I did this morning, how to get set up to use Swell again, and then how you can start playing. So, what do you think of my garden? Not too bad, huh? I know a little bit of stuff I got to soak up here. Look at that. My sponge just gets that water right up. So, I did these this morning. They're uh, not quite dry, but almost. But they have been dunked in water to stop the process. Now, for those of you who are new to swelling, I'm just going to run you through the basic premise of what you need to do to get started with it. This is kind of like a starter video, not advanced. Okay, first thing you need to do, glove up. See them gloves? Um, Got to glove up because Swelligant is a, a skin irritant, okay? You know, it's not like an acid that is probably going to eat right through your skin, but some people are super sensitive, so be smart. Use workroom safety, glove up. Um, another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get like a... A paper plate. I've got a, a nasty one there with a bunch of stuff on it already um, that I did from this morning. You're going to get a clean paper plate or a little china plate. Um, you might want some of these swab things. You may use them, you may not, but they're a good thing to have around. Um, get some sponges. I have some little piece of sponge that I cut off of one of these type of uh, things because I didn't have any regular sponges. I was so mad. And then some of these little um, cups, little medicine cups if you have some. Um, that's a really good thing. And the reason I want those is because with Swelligant, um, with the patinas, you want to pour a little bit into the cup, okay, rather than dip out of the bottle because you'll pollute the bottle and dilute it. So don't do that. Pour it into the cup. As for this, this is your metal coating. This is what you lay down first. This is what will cause the effect on the resin because it's got it's metal paint. It's actually metal in this paint bound in with the I think a resin binder. So you want to squirt some on your paint like I did here, uh, on your paper plate like I did here, um, and then these um, patinas when you get ready to use them, you're going to want to pour some in a little cup. Okay. Um, we're not going to get into the dioxides in this one. I, I don't use the dioxides a lot. I am a big, big fan of brass, bronze, and copper because those are my favorites. You know, the silver and the iron and pewter and all that, the other ones, they're great too. I just favor these, so that's why I have them here. And then I favor the Tiffany Green um, and the new Sky Sapphire is awesome. And the darkening, I've shown you before how quick you can get your brass dark with that without that stank of liver of sulfur. So I always have darkening on hand too. This one. And I'll show you something that oops, down here. And I'll show you something that I have done with that a little bit later. But these are all resin. They started out looking like this. 
pretty, aren't they? Let me move this out of the way so you can see. Very pretty. So, I'm going to do a couple to kind of just show you, you know, what you can expect. Now, with swelling, it, it takes a little time for the patina to develop, so I'm just going to lay everything down so that you see how, you know, to do it. But basically with the patina, you're going to come back in maybe 25 minutes to 45 minutes, and you'll see the patina has developed. When it has developed to the point that you're satisfied with it, that's when you dunk it in water and you stop the action. Because if you don't do that, it'll just keep eating at it, eating at it, eating at it, till time forevermore. Okay, so you know when there will be a continual reaction, chemical reaction. So you want to stop that. So all you have to do is just dunk it in some water, dry it off, and you're done. Okay, and then if you don't like it, you can paint over it and do it again. You know, do whatever you want. But I'm going to do a few here. In fact, you know, I think this is still good, what I've got here. So I'm going to just use some of it. I've got copper here, and this is brass. I know it's an ugly mess, but it'll, it'll get us where we want to go. So we're going to do it. So I've got a clean brush. These are just kitty brushes that you get any dollar store or whatever. You can throw them out. I, I prefer to throw them out. You could wash them out, though, if you want to. You can. But I just usually throw them out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one. And the reason I like to use a brush with this rather than a sponge is because of the type of flower, the type of form it is. There's a lot of little cracks and crevices and grooves. Sometimes you can just sponge something. But in this case, I won't get it all in. Well, I'll show you. I'll get a little bit on my brush. And as I go along here, the only way, you can see, the only way I'm going to get it down in the cracks and crevices, see, is like, for example, if I use this, I wouldn't get it in the cracks and crevices. I just get it on the edges. That's no good. So we have to get down into here so that we can get the patina to bloom well because you can pour patina all over the bare resin. It won't do anything to it. It's not going to turn unless you get this metal coating done. Whatever color you like. If you'd rather do the silver, we have silver at bsuboutiques.com. Um, we have most of the dioxides. But that's another subject for another day. Although, if you want to go back through my videos, you'll see some videos about it. Um, we're just sticking to the brass metal coatings today. And the patinas. You know, I love this project. Pro well, I love this project, but I love this product. I can't praise it enough. And I am so happy that my dear friend, Christy Friesen, and I do call her a dear friend, we've come to know each other as, as good friends, um, developed this product and brought it to the market. And I was one of the first ones to just jump on the bandwagon because I'm like, oh yeah, because see, you can use it for so many things. You can use it for polymer clay, which is why, why you know she does it, because she's the polymer clay queen and princess of the world, you know. Oh yes, she is. I think she is. But um, I do metal, as you know, and we, we do a lot of metal stampings. And this stuff is the bomb on metal, and it's, it's packaged in easy sizes where you don't have to make a huge investment. So I've got this all covered, okay? Covered pretty well. You, you might want it more thorough, okay, fine, then you do that. But now we want to get the patina on it. So we take our bottle. And another thing I forgot to tell you because I didn't do it on here. When you are going to use Swell Again and you have a new bottle, well, really every time, take it and shake it away from yourself because sometimes it will kind of get a little effervescent. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to use this. I'm going to shake it a little bit. Probably didn't need to deal with the patina. But it has these nice little bottles that you just flip the cap open. And I'm going to pour just a little bit. You don't need too, too, too much, especially since I'm only going to do, you know, like one flower with it. Isn't that gorgeous? Now that is blue. Okay, so now what I'm going to do 
And this is how I do the resin flowers. You may do other things different ways, but this is how I do these. And I've been doing them a lot, so this works good for me. As I get that in my sponge. Set my cup back. And now I'm just going to start and it's okay to do it with a sponge. You can use the brush too if you want, you know, more control. But the 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 sponge is <laughs> pretty nice for doing it this way. See how it's really getting the fine little like the little veins and the details in this. And see, did I get this on the sides? Yes, yeah, so I might want to put a little bit of blue there too. This will be really lovely when it's done. And when I'm done with it, if I want to put like a little bit more excuse me, metallic color on it. Once it's dry and the patina has bloomed, I can do that. Or I can go back and I can distress it a little bit. Now this has a lot of detail, so you want to want to go filing on that or distressing on that, you know, with an emery board or with a nail block real hard because you file off detail. You don't want to do that, but a little bit would be okay. So that's how I did that one. Now I'm going to show you another trick that I have. And oh, something else you can do to speed up this process, especially when you use the darkening patina, is you can use the heat tool. And this is the one I like, and this is the one we sell because it's super, super uber hot. Okay? Um, but you got to be careful with resin. You don't get weight down on it. You got to stay up because this one's so hot. You know, you can mess your resin up because it's kind of like a plastic type thing. I mean, you can see where I've got puckering here <laughs> on my mat. I should have come over onto the non-stick heat surface to do that, and I didn't. So, you know, even I screw up too. But believe me, even I, I, I screw up all the time. And I don't mind letting you see because I like you to see what could happen. So I never profess to be an expert. You know what? I'm going to get a sponge and I'm going to go on the edges with this. This is kind of some pretty drama without using any of the uh, patinas. You can just go on this black rose or a very dark colored rose which you could have painted it yourself or it could have come you know from the manufacturer this way. These came from the manufacturer that way. And just tinge the outer leaves. Isn't that dramatic? I love that. Now what I'll do, since I've got some basic, is I'll just take, um, ah, I got some blue in it. I better wipe it off. Ah, I'll use another one. Here's another one. Ah, here's a little copper. Maybe try some of that too. Just lightly. Now, if I wanted to, I could put some um, Swilligant Patina over that and just catch little nuances, but I kind of just like it like this. I love Swilligant Metal Coatings for adding accents when I'm doing paint on brass. I do it a lot. I'll get them out, just add a little bit of gold here and there. They're very mellow looking and rich. They look very metallic because they have metal in them, in the paint. So that's a little trick that you can do. Now you might say, well, um, what do I do to the back, you know, to get it, you know, well, I put some on the backs. But most of this stuff, you're probably going to glue to something. I'll use this in assemblage, a lot of it. So what I'll do when I go to glue it to something, I'll rough this up first. And then I'll glue it to my brass to make my collage jewelry. But you might say, too, well, what if I only have colored flowers? Do I have to have white or black? No, you can have colored flowers. A lot of these were colored flowers. I think this one, no, that was a white one. Which one was it that was? I had it set aside, too, and of course now I can't find it. Just such a confusing day. Maybe it's just, yeah, this was a, a mauve one. I think I use a little bit of darkening on this one because it's got some blackening on the edges. So let's, um, you know, let's do that. Let's put a little darkening on this and let's see what happens to it. 
Let's go with some copper. Because with the darkening, what's so cool is I can show you the change pretty quick because it takes so fast. I'm not sure how fast it'll take on the resin, but on metal, it's like now. It's so awesome how quick it goes on metal. I don't hardly ever get the liver of sulfur out anymore because it's so slow to turn brass. Real fast for copper and sterling, but slow for brass, and brass is what I use. So, you know, I want something that's going to work and work now. So I've got that pretty well coated. So now I'm going to take the sponge and I'm going to put some darkening patina. Once again, I'll shake just a little tiny bit. And I'll put some in a cup. Let me bring it out to the foreground so that you can see better. Keep thinking you're here. Oh, it's a brand new one. That's why it's not pouring because I have to take the thing off. I think I have an open one here. Yes. Don't open a new one if you've got part of one already. Okay, that's enough. Okay, so now I'm going to take a sponge. And I'm just kind of dribbling it in there. I don't know if you can see. Now I can't use the heat gun on here because, you know, this plastic can't take it that this is on. It's a really good plastic to do work like this on. But if, I don't know, Poppy, can you move down here with me a little bit? I don't know if they're going to be able to see. I'll have to show you after how, how fast this is going to turn. You might have to have her come down here. You have to be careful on a resin. Like on the metal, I'd be like right down on it now. But not with resin. You have to be careful. Kind of get it, tease it a little bit off to the side. And you know, this stuff does not have a lot of smell either. It really, really doesn't. Okay. Now, this thing's so hot, I probably, because this is not metal, I could probably do that real quick. But you can see how the darkening is coming up really quick. So now I'll just leave this to cool in like 5-10 minutes. It's going to have a lot of darkening on it. Now with metal, that's another thing entirely. I'll show you a couple I did this morning that are metal, not resin. And we've done this before in videos. This one is a combination. This is one of those great big pocket watch lockets that I got. We have a pretty good stock of them, but I don't know for how long because they're vintage. Um, let's see if I can get it open with these gloves on. This is what the, this what it looks like inside the brass. If you saw the newsletter last week, you may have seen um, where I took and did one of these with just the darkening patina. This one has the sky blue and the Tiffany green and the darkening. <laughs> I wanted to experiment and get them all on there and see. And then I've buffed it back. And so it's it's really old looking. You know, the, the um, patina is uneven. That's on purpose so that it will look antique. And then what I'll do is I'll take maybe one of these flowers I'm putting them in. I don't know if I like that one. Maybe this one. Or maybe this one. Or maybe this one. Or maybe that one. Or maybe a stone. <laughs> or something else. Or maybe maybe I'll do one of these flowers or something. I don't know. I'm going to play with it some more. But then this went really fast because I used my heat tool with it. And with metal I can go a lot faster. Let me not move it out of the picture so fast. Now here's one I'm going to show you an example. Um, this is a really huge locket that we got. It looks like this when you get it, when it comes in your order. Okay, but I did my thing to it and I made it look like that with the darkening. And I can show you how, kind of how that goes, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Javi stop the camera and move down with me a little bit so she can 
see, you know, you can see how quick that this really goes on here, okay? So we'll just move the camera down. Okay, so the first thing I would want to do with this locket is I would probably take the, the quadruple aught zero 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 steel wool, super fine steel wool, and go over this really good. Just to kind of make, because this is old and it's got some patina on it, I think it might even have a little bit of copper coating over the brass. It kind of looks like it. I don't think it's steel. I didn't buy it for steel. Sometimes stuff that's cop it, this coppery look is steel underneath. I don't think it is though. It's it reacts like brass. Of I didn't do the magnet thing, but anywho. So I'm just kind of getting that cleaned up on both sides a little bit. This will provide a little bit of tooth for the darkening patina too. Now, I'm just going to take, I've got some darkening patina in a cup, like I showed you, and I have a brush. And I'm just going to take and heat this thing up. Okay, I'm going to try to keep my hands out because I'm going to take the brush and go along behind myself after I get this hot. Now, you don't want to do this with a torch, guys. Don't do it with a torch. You could tor torch it first and then let it be hot, but don't have the torch on when you're using the patina. That's not a good idea. But I'm going to paint that on. Okay, let me shut this off because that's pretty hot now. Look at that. And I don't want to lose my heat because I want to get it even. Now, when you get this done, and you can't be touching it either because it's it's too hot. Um, when you get it done, you can keep going back over in it, it and get it just black. And then if you like it that way, leave it that way. You can seal it. Seal it with uh, Krylon. If it doesn't take all the way out to the edges, it cools down a little bit. Um, you can do it again or just put the heat back on it or probably pull it. Look at how black that is. That just went now. So we just have a little rim of the patina. There we go. It's starting to dry up. If you get a little too hot, it'll kind of gray down on you, but you might like that look. So, so okay. It's done. That's one side. So I could, now don't touch it because that'll be really, really hot. So I could, let it be like that, I could Renaissance wax it and keep it permanent. I could distress it with the steel wool and get it looking more like this and take most of that black off and just leave it in the crevices. Um, I could add some color to it, like I could do a little bit of the blue or the Tiffany green patina over top of it. That would be really, really cool. Um, I could add some paints to it. Paint some of these little things in. You can you can use other products together. I found that with Swelligant, the vintage inks work pretty decent with that. Um, some of the Lumiere work pretty good. Most of your acrylic paints, you know, it's it's kind of a all-purpose type um, medium. You, I mean, you can blend it with a lot of stuff, no problem. And then to seal it, a lot of times I'll use the Krylon mat or satin. Um, they also make a sealant. This is the matte finish, clear sealant. And it's pretty sweet too. But um, you know, there's just a bunch of stuff. You could put resin on it if you want, but then it's going to be really, really glossy. So keep that in mind. You know, if you did diamond glaze or resin, then it's going to be glossy. This is going to stay looking like that. If I put this on here, it's too soon. It's too hot and too soon. I can't put this on yet to show you. But if I put this on here, it will look like that. It won't change. It will stay that way. So if that's the way you like it, then that's what you want to do. But anyway, so just to review a little bit, what you need to do is remember your gloves. Um, shake the bottles, especially the metal coatings. You want to shake the metal coatings. 
away from you and open them away from you. Um, use your little medicine cups. Use your paper plates. So you just throw them out. Use your cheapy brushes and your little foam sponges on it. And then just, just play because you just can't hardly wreck it. It's hard to get a completely, totally uniform, the same thing every time type look with this product. But that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, in nature, when we see rust and corrosion and patina and whatever, it's never all the same. It's, 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 it's uh, unique every time. So with Swelligant, you're going to get something that is unique every time. So remember, you can use it on your resin roses and cameos. So have fun. There's a video at my website in the tutorials from Lindsay Alford about how to patina a rainbow to use the different swelligant dioxides, which is another product in this line on chain, but also she has one on using swelligant patinas on cameos, which are also resin. So you might like to come over to the website at bsuboutiques.com and review it. These resin roses are also on the website, and if you look under lockets, you will see these lockets. We have a lot of wonderful old vintage lockets right now. We even have some four-way lockets. I don't know how long they last. They're a little bit spendy, so we might have them a while, but I just don't give great stuff away. You know, they're, they're worth it every dime, but they're affordable. They're just not a dollar. So come over and have a look at them. You might just have to have one. Lockets are wonderful. And so are resin roses, and they aren't expensive. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for putting up with me. Once again, I'm a little wound up, but that's my life. It's just a little wound up. So you have some peace and calm, and enjoy yourself. Get out your swell again and have a ball. We carry it at the site, too.